So today I want to look at a super small startup, like less than a few dozen customer size startup, yet it is still popping $60 a day. So this little SaaS called Image Lab launched just a few months ago, and they nailed a very common and real problem right on the head. And I actually found this tool because I was experiencing a very similar problem to what they claim to be able to solve. I needed to create a metric ton of images programmatically for this site that I'm building. Now, probably not an actual metric ton. I'm sure the data actually only weighs like a few nanograms, but I needed to create like 6,000 dynamic images with text and other images like embedded into each other. So it was just a mess. So what Image Lab allows you to do is send their API an image and some information about how to style it and crop it and do text overlays and do filters and other stuff like that. And then they send you back the image hosted on a content delivery network worldwide. It seems super easy to use. Now I wanna point out right here that this is not a new or groundbreaking idea. Cloudinary has been doing this for over a decade. The thing is, Image Lab took one of their features, one of their small features, and they built an entire business around it. Now, if that sounds like a strategy that you've heard before, it's because I probably mentioned it in almost every video because that strategy of looking at a bigger player and just picking out one of their small features, that's a strategy that a lot of small startup founders use to get their startup growing. Another well-known strategy that I talk about sometimes on this channel is looking below this video at the like button. And if it's not filled, go ahead and click on it to fill it and you'll actually get a fun little animation of YouTube or a cute little fireworks, okay? So just click on this, click the like button. Anyway, I think that the problem that Image Lab is solving here is very real and it's gonna to continue to grow as people need these dynamically created images on the fly. But as a first time founder, why should you guess? Why should you just go with like a gut feeling that, hey, I think this is a good idea. Why not look at the real data? If a company like Cloudinary that's doing a hundred million dollars in ARR and has a multi-billion dollar valuation is doing something like odds are it's probably right. So follow in the footsteps of giants and odds are you'll be able to grab a few crumbs. So what I can tell about Image Lab is on the front end, it's a very simple build. They're using Alpine JS and Tailwind for styling. Now, Alpine's a little different than what we normally see uh, on these breakdowns, like, you know, we usually see React or Vue or something like that. And that's because the front end here is dead simple. And Alpine is super lightweight and very easy to implement. React or Vue would honestly have just been overkill in this instance. And, and the founder probably knew that or they just went with Alpine because it's something that they already knew how to use. And you should always go with what you know for an MVP because that's gonna lower your time to market. I see way too many people worrying way too early about what tech stack they're going to use. Just use what you know and go from there. If you don't know anything at all, then learn whatever is popular. And the reason for that is because there's gonna be a lot more information, documentation, guides, and courses out there that'll be able to help you learn it very quickly. And right now, that's pretty much React on the front end. It's the most popular front end framework or library, I should say. And then something like Node.js or Python on the back end. Now I know you're thinking, oh, I have to build it early so that it can scale. Well, look, here's the thing. If your project takes off, you're very likely going to have to rewrite the entire thing anyway. Every startup I've ever worked with or have even heard of has done at least one full rewrite of their entire code base during their growth stage. So I petition to all of you developers out there to stop over-engineering everything and shoot to just have an MVP out in just a few days. Now, sure, that MVP probably can't handle 100,000 concurrent users, but guess what? You don't even have one concurrent user. So you may be able to get bragging rights for building this amazing platform that can scale, but who really cares if it can scale if it never does? I digress. 
Now, I don't know much about the back end of ImageLab because it's a private tool, but if I had to guess, I would say it's probably written in Ruby. And that's because that was one of the first languages that the founder supported in their API. Note, they probably went with the language that they were most comfortable and familiar with. But it really could be written in any language like JavaScript or Python. In fact, because this tool didn't 100% cover what I needed to use it for, I actually ended up writing my own version in JavaScript to cover my project's needs. That's all cool and stuff, but how much dough is this founder baking? Like I said earlier, it's about 60 bucks a day. And looking at their pricing plan, that would mean they really only have a couple dozen paying users. Now, what I always like to see on these small startups is like the unlimited aspects of their pricing plans. Obviously, they can't really offer unlimited bandwidth on their $50 a month plan, but given such a small number of users, they're probably banking on the fact that no one's gonna abuse their system. Most of their users probably only use like a very small amount of bandwidth and bandwidth is actually pretty cheap anyway. AWS's CloudFront CDN is only like uh, 10 cents a gigabyte. So a user would have to be using like half a terabyte to use $50 worth of bandwidth. Um, so that's probably unlikely. And if I do the math here, um, you know, 500 gigs would be like, I don't know, 25 million served images if the compressed image is like 20 kilobytes. Um, so maybe it's a little more if the image is a little larger, but I really doubt that any one of their users is serving 25 million images a month. It's probably like a hundred or a thousand. So at that amount, that's only gonna cost them like a fraction of a cent. And that would also be the cost to store the images well. Storage in S3 is like roughly the same. Now the unlimited transformations that they offer are also undoubtedly cheap as well. They, they only have to be run once when the image is first processed and stored. And then you don't need a big server to do that at all. You could probably even do it serverless uh, if you code it right. So the costs here are likely a few dollars a month in total. That leaves the founder with about a 99% profit margin. Now acquiring such a small amount of paid users honestly wouldn't be that hard at all. And it really the first few dozen users are the hardest, but I think that the founder probably got these, these initial users by just posting useful and helpful information on various forums and groups and on Twitter. Now the trend with a lot of these like small fry startups is to utilize what I call like in the trenches marketing, essentially marketing directly to other small startups or users that have a similar problem that that person has already solved. So basically help people by answering their questions and then pitch your tool as an alternative to doing it the hard way. A great example of this for Image Lab would be, you know, someone asks on a forum, how do you crop and add filters to images via code? Then the founder could reply to that and say, well, you have to download the image and then you have to apply the CSS filters locally and you have to tweak the filters and then you have to verify the alignment of the flex box using artificial intelligence image processing. Or you could just use this tool I made. It's called Image Lab. And we do all that for you behind the scenes. It'll save you a bunch of time and probably some heartache. Now, not everybody will go for it right away, of course, but that question and the answer that you left will be on that forum probably forever. So in the future, people come looking for a similar answer to a similar question. They might stumble upon your startup and sign up and become a paying member. Being just genuinely helpful has always been an in-style form of marketing that many massively successful companies have employed. It's just more recently known as content marketing. Now, like I said earlier, I didn't actually end up using Image Lab for my project. And the fact that I didn't use it might shine a little light for someone watching that might want to take this idea and run with it. So what I needed to do was take an entire HTML component and render it as an image. More specifically, I was making these dynamic trading cards similar to this code pen here. I had thousands of base images and I wanted to template them. Uh, using 
you know, a base card, a base image. And then I wanted to inject custom information in them like the, the title and the name, powers or whatever. I thought about doing this in Photoshop somehow, but that would have likely been a terrible nightmare. And I knew I needed to code something from scratch. Now Image Lab might have been able to work, but I think it would have required a lot of finagling to get it to do exactly what I needed it to do. What I really needed was an API that I could just send HTML and CSS to, and it would render that out as an image and then send it back to me. So I ended up just hacking together my own little tool in an afternoon and it ended up working perfectly for exactly what I needed it to do. Now that is a slightly different use case than what Image Lab is, is going after. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how widespread this particular problem would be, but I do know that many different sites, because I own a lot of different sites, need things like watermarking, cropping, text overlays, filters, and things like that for the images that they put on their sites. So I know for a fact that that is a very real problem. And again, that is what Cloudinary does and they make a lot of money. And you could always roll in like DAL E or another AI image generator uh, to specifically create like the featured image for different blog posts or other pieces of content for different sites. Another obvious direction is to go back to the big players like Cloudinary and just look at all of the different uh, tools that they offer in their massive tool suite. So they actually have a similar cropping service, but for video. And so this would be incredibly useful for the uh, creator economy. And as more and more people start creating video and all these different kinds of content, they wanna share it across multiple platforms. And therefore, various aspect ratios, right? You take a horizontal video and turn it into a vertical video. All of these different videos are gonna need cropping. And right now, I'd wager it's done mostly manually. So go out there and build a tool just like that, but that does it all programmatically. And have it track the person in the video so that they're like centered in the vertical shot because it always bugs me when I, when I see a vertical video and the crop is just off. Honestly, if you just go to Cloudinary's website and uh, look at all the different things that they offer, you can just pick one that you think would be a good standalone on its own and then just go build it. So as always, get out there and start building and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.